Welcome to my first Vim screencast. So in this screencast I'm going to just give you a basic introduction to Vim, uh, talk about what makes it Vim, and give you a few basics that you'll need to use Vim. So right now I'm in GVim, which is a graphical version of Vim. Uh, in the future I'll be using VIEMU for some of the demos, and VIEMU is a Vim emulator for Visual Studio. I use it every day. I love it. I don't think I could use Visual Studio without it. Uh, I'm also using, for these screencasts, uh, Keyboard Jedi. Now this is a tool that Roy Osharov put out that shows you your keyboard shortcuts as you type them, which is perfect for screencasts like this. I hacked it quite a bit in order for it it to show non-special keys. So normally it only would show Control J, Control C, whatever. Right now it will show any key I press. Uh, and it will also show it multiple keys on one line. It'll make it, you'll see why in, in a sec. So let's start off by talking about what makes Vim Vim. Vim is a modal editor, meaning that there are multiple modes in the editor. Right now I'm in normal mode which is kind of the standard mode, the mode that you'll spend most of your time in. And you can tell I'm in normal mode because my cursor is this blinking block right here. Now, I can enter into insert mode from this mode. And now you can tell I'm in insert mode because it says insert down there and my cursor is turned into a line. Uh, you could also see how I got into insert mode. I press the I key. Now, while I'm in insert mode, I can type text. Anything I type gets entered. Now, to get out of insert mode and get back to normal mode, I would hit escape. Uh, however, I think that escape is a bit too far to reach. The whole point of Vim is to keep your keys on the home row. So what I hit is control bracket. Uh, you can see that right here. Uh, control bracket will get you back into normal mode and from normal mode you can navigate around the document and uh, you can go back into insert mode whenever you want to change text. Another mode that Vim has is command mode and what command mode allows you to do is do various things like save the file, open another file, uh, search the file, uh, perform search and replaces and numerous, numerous other complicated things. Uh, so you enter command mode by pressing the colon. Now here I can type W to write the file and I'll call this foo.txt. Now you can see that I'm editing foo.txt. Right here you can see that I saved foo.txt. Uh, there are a few other modes. There's visual mode which is kind of like block select. Uh, there's different types of visual mode. This one's visual line. You can do visual block, uh, just visual, etc. Then there's also X mode, which is for stringing command colon commands together without having to press colon in between each one. I don't think I've ever used that. The first thing that you're going to want to do probably is open a file. So we're going to go ahead and E for edit. And now you can see I opened up 1.txt in my Vim directory. Now this is also the outline for this particular screencast. So you see we've covered this. I've already kind of covered this. W is for write colon w to write the file you can you can do that in order to write the current file so the next thing I want to cover is basic navigation I said before that you want to spend most of your time in normal mode uh, most vim at vim users their first time will go into insert mode and then just stay in insert mode they'll use the arrow keys to get around and they just won't take advantage of any of the power that vim has to offer so what I want to teach you first is to try and always remain in normal mode. Unless you're actively typing text, you want to remain in normal mode. This means that as soon as you're done typing text, you hit escape or control bracket. 
so the first thing you need to learn to do is to move around. Now, the way you move around is with four keys. H, J, K, and L. They're right there on the home row. J and K will go up and down. Now, I remember that because the J kind of looks like a down arrow. And so J goes down, K goes up. Then L and H go left and right. Yes, L is right, and that's a little confusing, but it's on the right side of your keyboard, so it makes more sense. Okay, next, something that most people will use when they're editing code or what have you is home and end. Now, home and end are on the other side of your keyboard, so of course Vim is going to provide a, another key for that. Uh, home is the caret, which is apparently showing up as a 6 right now, uh, so I need to fix that in Keyboard Jedi, but uh, Shift 6, the caret, will bring you to home. Uh, and you'll notice it brings me to the first non-white space character. This is the normal home behavior. Uh, if you double tap home in Visual Studio, it'll bring you to the first uh, first character overall. Now this doesn't do that. There's another key to bring you to the very first character. It's zero. It brings you to the zeroth column. Uh, the next thing is end, or in Vim's case, dollar sign. Shift 4. The dollar sign will bring you to the last letter of a line. The next thing is page up and page down. In Vim, there's a few ways you can move up and down on the screen. Uh, the one I use most frequently is Control D and Control U. Control D goes down a page, Control U goes up a page. Pretty simple. Uh, the other ones they behave a little bit differently and I won't discuss them at this time. So the next thing is editing a document. Okay, so now I can move around the document, I can move around just fine, I can get wherever I want, get to the end of this line. Now I want to call this, let's say, instead of basic navigation, I want to say basic navigation 2. So I'm going to go ahead and hit A for append text space 2. Hit escape. Now I just used something a little advanced there. Um, B goes back a word. Uh, I'll probably cover some of those motions next time. So I will bring us to insert. Now insert will happen before the, the cursor. So I'm going to say not so basic navigation. So again, I before a letter, A after a letter. When you're on the last character of a line, you have to use A to get after it. When you're on the first character of a line, you have to use I to get before it. That's about it for this screencast. Uh, Next time I'll cover some more advanced motions and uh, some other cool stuff. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, anything, please leave comments on the blog. Thank you.